because the, the nuts and bolts of being a sanctuary state and a refuge for trans kids means giving kids, contrary to the law, contrary perhaps even to their families, puberty blockers, reconstructive genital surgery, and hormone therapy. Again, uh, profoundly strange. Disgusting rumor. What's wrong with them? Uh, like Jack Pacific, uh, Charlie Kirk, like all the people who spread racist birther conspiracies, white replacement, white supremacist and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories just won't ever shut the fuck up about how, oh yeah, uh, she she uh, she's only a DEI hire and she's only uh, gotten her job by sucking and fucking her way to the top. Like those people, like pieces of shit are upset about a couch joke. And again, all he said is, is basically like, I would love to debate him if he can get off the couch. And, and it was like, yeah, very light gloves. You know, that's that's like a wink kind of a reference that, like, clearly everyone bursts out laughing about. It's funny, I had normie fucking pol- political friends tell me, like, what's up with the couch stuff yesterday? I was like, oh, okay, so it's broken into the mainstream. Their response to all of this was, again, to, to not be like, oh, okay, you made that up, uh, or be like, what about the other stories? Are they true? Oh, the other stories are worse. The thing with the couch stuff is you wish he was a couch fucker, honestly. Like, that's, you can call it the Mott and Bailey, right? It is that, like, people who are like, oh, how could you lie about the couch? It's true, the couch thing is unsubstantiated at this moment, uh, moment in time. The rest is not speculation. All these stories, you know, there's a lot of real shit. Uh, so they decided, hey, if you do that about us, we'll do that. We'll do that about you. Uh, immediately, you saw these like right wingers posting like memes that were like Tim Walls fucked a gerbil and swallows horse semen and Tim blah blah blah. I was like, oh, okay, so like none of this works. Like right now, you're just doing the thing where you're acting super weird and you don't see it for what it is. But like the 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 Vance Couch thing was funny because it was a shit post. That was believable. It was. It was like, yeah, okay. He, he looks like a dude who fucks couches. Fair enough. Like the the fact that it's like it's in hillbilly elegy. It's on this page. He specifically describes putting a latex cl- uh, glove between cushions and all this kind of stuff. Like it, it's just funny that it was a throwaway shit post, and that's why it worked and it kind of like took a life of its own. If you're just frothing at the mouth, screaming and pointing at this dude and being like, oh, you, she drinks horse gum. I see it. You know, then ah. <laughs> and yeah, you're, you're just coming across as, again is profoundly strange. This is really weird ass behavior. Like you never even got how the joke was funny in the first place. You just think it's like gross thing. You know, all oh, there. This is, uh, you know, the left is getting better at, uh, you know, comedy and the left is getting better at memeing because they're actually, you know, saying like gross things like we do. And it's like, no, no, no. There, there was a little bit more to this. But uh, honestly, the worst shit is worse, you know, much worse. Look. Of years he was a congressman <laughs> to his former high school students he was Mr. Walls <laughs> <laughs> she's so strange sometimes he was Mr. Walls <laughs> and to his former high school football players he was coach <laughs> coach And in 90 days, the nation will know Coach Walls by a new title. <laughs> Vice President of the... Yeah, it's, it's too joyous. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. You have a hell of a road to climb Republicans. Because right now, you're trying to match just people being like, oh, you know what? This is just kind of fun and smiling. Even people who are like... Uh, staunch critics uh, of, you know, America, Kamala Harris, uh, you know, the, the the history of her support for both APAC, uh, speaking at APAC events, uh, you know, the fact that, like, dramatically, I don't really know she's going to be changing things, but it's like, oh, no, it's just, you're getting caught up in the brunch of it all, you know, and it's just, uh, but it's kind of silly and fun to smile, so I'm going to do that now, and, and that's going to be really difficult meeting that with, like, Women shouldn't control their reproductive organs. I don't think women should be able to control the reproductive organs. It's like, uh, what's the other side got? (laughs) And going back to the other one? Yeah, the the, the trans people's genitals must be inspected. Okay, uh, go back again. (laughs) I don't know. The the other one seems more pleasant. You know, I... Dalliances with weird stack stuff as it pertains... 
What did you just say, my dude? Let's try again. Tim Tim Waltz's dalliances with weird stack stuff as Stech it stuff. pertains to kids does not end there. Okay, what? <laughs> well, where did it start? I know this is just being clipped in the middle of the conversation, but I'm very curious. So are they just going right to pedo? There's like... I'm sorry. This is why I keep telling you, no one is safe. They're, even straight people, even straight people with families, you know, people who don't even have a, a queer bone in their body. Uh, even that, even, <laughs> wait, but they're an ally. Yes. Oh, yeah, they're totally down with the gays. Think gays are completely fine, human, and worthy of love, and also should have equal rights to everyone else. Oh, okay, it's pedophile. No, 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 you misheard me. No, 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 I made up my mind. Pedophile, then. That's what you're saying, pedophile. Okay. The, the tampon law is real. It was it, it was a law that went into effect. This oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you saw uh, Tim's tampons or whatever. I'll pull up. Again, just uh, profoundly normal, guys. Really, really going for the, the whole, yeah, we're, we're totally uh, normal people. Uh, Hi, right check of Libs of TikToks. The cast of terrorist extraordinaire and participant in the January 6th coup attempt uh, post this. And I, all of a sudden, it was going all over the place. Tampon Tim, tampon Tim, <laughs> tampon Tim. Um, for providing uh, free tampons for students who need them in high school. That, that's that's honestly it that that's <laughs> that's that's the controversy that's like oh my god you know in, in public buildings where, where, where people can go parks etc there will be free tampons ah the horror how dare you well yeah but what if he puts it inside of the men's washroom because you men don't need tampons <laughs> Well, some men do, but I'm not going to fight you on this one. There's just no getting through. Um, but say, how about this? Uh, what if you're a cis dude? Just one of the boys. Fair enough. I don't get periods, right? It's like, I'm a cis guy. I'm a cis bro. Don't worry about it. But what if you have a friend? What if you have a friend who needs one? And what if there's none left in the women's washroom? And what if they're like, hey, would you be able to grab a tampon for me? Uh, well, I can't do that. I'm a man. There won't be tampons for me. Oh, turns out there are. Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. Here you are. End, end of story. Uh, but that, again, that, that's the horror here. That's why he's Tampon Tim. This year, it's, it's actually a relatively recent law affects grades 4 through 12. He also signed a law last year making Minnesota a sanctuary state and a refuge for trans kids. Based. So Tim Waltz signed a law just last year that said, hey, if you're having trouble ca castrating yourself or going on cross-sex hormones or doing weird sex stuff and you're a little kid and maybe your parents don't like it, come to Minnesota. Come here, little kids. Come to the white van. Like, honestly, this is so fucking creepy. You, you, it's going to be one of those things I think that is going to be studied, you know, like weird particles years down the road when, it, when it's just like looking back on this era where it was like it was highly profitable within like a certain demographic and niche on the Internet to, to appeal. And by the way, this is in large part due to the fact that the Internet is global. There's a reason why sometimes you'll find that like a lot of these people who do have large audiences don't quite pull large numbers when they're trying to do their like really creepy stuff IRL. Because, again, you got to associate with like the, the sickos internationally uh, to choose get like a big audience for a lot of these kind of things but if you view the lens through the whole kind of like yeah what would i do if i was a sicko pervert well i guess i'd do this and it's like no 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 no, no. what these laws enacted that you're trying to criticize right now uh they are good for children who may be kicked out of their families for being queer if you're a gay kid and you're kicked out of your family uh should you be homeless should there be no city in which you can find sanctuary if your parents were worried about the safety of their children if they're uh, you know going to be targeted by far-right extremists is there nowhere you can go is there nowhere you can bring them uh, a sanctuary city is a is a beautiful idea and, and one that anyone uh, who doesn't want to harm queer kids would see as a good thing if you want queer kids to get hurt if you want them to be homeless if you want them to be beat up if you want them to be killed then you might have an opposition to it. Then you might see it as creepy. Then you might be like, yes, this is the thing that is gross. And of the Midwest. Yes, we have gummies and candies and puppies and cross-sex hormones here. Just come on over here, kids. Uh, very odd, very strange behavior because the, the nuts and bolts of being a sanctuary state and a refuge for trans kids means giving kids contrary to the law, contrary perhaps even to their families, puberty blockers, reconstructive genital surgery, and hormone therapy.
again, uh, profoundly strange that they just obsess over this. I, I saw yesterday people melting down over Tim Walls because they hadn't figured out how to attack him. I, like, I knew this would be what would come with picking straight, white, cis, male, married, with kids, like exactly as I predicted. That's ex the, who they're going to go with because, yeah, it just makes sense on paper, right? It's not because I'm, I'm a genius. It's what anyone who's realizing the American electric demographics would have done. And then in that case, it's like, well, what do we go with? Well, uh, he was picked by Obama, uh, trans for trans. And it was like, what the fuck? Or, or that dude who pretends to be a black woman online, Joey, whatever. Uh, he was posting pictures of Tim Waltz and his family. He's like, this is his family, just so we're clear. And then other conservatives were like, what's the problem? He's like, nothing I can uh, like, you know, notice yet, but please continue investigating. And you're just like, what the hell? <laughs> so I guess you just haven't figured it out yet. You're workshopping what kind of bigotry you got to enact on the guy. Uh, Tim Waltz, before he was a governor before he was a congressman. He was a teacher. He was a, a high school teacher. He founded the first gay straight alliance at Mankato West High School way back in 1999. Incredible. So all the way back in 1999, this guy was a pioneer when it comes to talking about weird sex stuff, desires and behaviors with 14 year olds. Wait, what? How did you how did you get there? Again, profoundly sick and strange. Michael, if someone's like, we want to start an organization that is a gay straight alliance, which there are many, many schools have them, simply put to be able to have outreach programs, to be able to normalize being gay to other students who may have biases and bigotry from, you know, their fucked up, really uh, bizarre and strange parents. Uh, that it's 100% it's for, uh, you know, acceptance and uh, it is not about giving tutorials on how to have anal sex to 14 year olds or anything of the sort you know like like it's wild that immediately it's like oh yes there, there was a gay straight alliance one in which is an outreach program and in many ways even having an lgbtq plus organization that's for children's safety they're usually formed by queer people in order to protect other queer people as in like yes uh we do need a safe space in order to be able to be ourselves and not worry as much about being targeted because we're not considered normal broadly speaking by all of society uh, to do that way back in the day shows an incredible amount of courage on the behalf of Tim Waltz. Uh, it is a decidedly good thing. Uh, it helps uh, more kids feel safe at school. Uh, it prevents uh, bullying. It prevents, uh, you know, a suicidal ideation. Uh, it is, it, it's just like a, a net good unless you want to harm queer kids. Like if that's your goal, then obviously you target them and try to tarnish the whole thing as like being pedophilic because that's the only way you can see anything you don't like. Little strange, isn't it? And what's what's ironic is, I haven't even used the word weird because of this irony. <laughs> I I'll be honest with you, I I don't think I found another insult that has quite rattled them as much as this, where like immediately their response is to just accelerate it to get even more strange on the spot, just to suddenly be like, oh, "I'm not weird, by the way. Kamala is not a black woman, and you can't control your wombs." And you're just like, "Jesus Christ!" All right, well. You are the weird ones. You're the ones who put giant titties in the White House. Today for our daily cancellation, we canceled Doug Emhoff. Now, if you don't know who Doug Emhoff is, he is the second gentleman. And if you don't know what the second gentleman is, that's the name we apparently use for the vice president's husband. It is, frankly, kind of an embarrassing title for a man to hold, but... <laughs> <laughs> like the deepest and most profound insecurities possible for anyone like i just don't understand it it's kind of the thing like i could never be married to a woman who makes more than me for i would be cucked in the process and it's like what it's like you wouldn't want to just like marry rich just because it's like to a woman that's wild. What if she was awesome? What if she was beautiful? And she's also like, I got a mansion. You can do whatever you want forever and you don't have to work. It's like, oh, but you might feel cucked. I, I don't actually at all. In fact, this sounds awesome. I can just, I can just live in the mansion and have fucking fun and, and a great relationship. And we have sexies that this, uh, the, the, the greatest possible deal in the universe. What are you talking about? Like, why, why is it suddenly like, oh, and by the way, you will be the first gentleman. Yes. The first man to be cucked in American history publicly by not being in a position of power, but being married to a partner who's in a position of power, absolute power. Like what? I, I don't have to do anything. Oh, yeah, totally. 
Oh, I'll go party in the White House. Hell yeah. Oh, man. Okay, okay. Just one thing. I, I know, I know. I'm, I'm not supposed to do a lot. I'm just supposed to be mostly, you know, answer some questions for the camera, do the occasional photo op and all that kind of... I know, I get it. But can I do Mario Kart? Please, please. I'll, I'll even do it on the lawn of the White House. Because I just want to do a Mario Kart. Like, we actually get the little go-karts. We wear costumes. We throw bananas at each other. All that kind of shit. We go through the hallways and stuff. Shining style. Can I please? That's all I ask. And then I, I will be neither seen nor heard. I'll be pretty for you, by the way. Yes, I, I will work out. I'll do whatever you want, honey. Like, uh, no problem. Like, in what way do you feel <laughs> as if, like, yeah, embarrassing. Huck. <laughs> what? <laughs> To be married to the president? <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> like, I like how Michelle could just randomly be like, um, I, I want a season of a show. It's like, what do you mean? Uh, the Bridgerton. Okay, like the new season? I think they're still, they're still making it. Yep. I want it. You want it? Yeah, I, look. I, I know it would be an abuse of power for me to ask you to do certain things and show favoritism to me because I'm your wife, all right? So you don't have to necessarily do something that might be, like, super illegal. But I just want you to do that. I, I want you to give it to me before anyone else can have it. I want it first. It's like, all right. <laughs> One phone call away. And she got it. She got the new season of Bridgerton before anyone else got to watch it. I was like, yeah. That was, like, a cute abuse of power. I could just want to do this. <laughs> Why stop with Mario Kart? Go full Donkey Kong. Oh, good call. Then Doug Emhoff is an embarrassing man. Over the weekend, it was revealed that Emhoff, who has been married to Kamala Harris for about 10 years, had an affair uh, that ended his first marriage, his previous marriage. Fox News reports, second gentleman Doug Emhoff, the husband of Vice President Kamala Harris, admitted Saturday to having an extramarital affair during his first marriage after a bombshell report by the Daily Mail reported he got his children's nanny pregnant. Quote, during my first marriage... Kirsten and I went through some tough times on account of my actions, he said in a statement to CNN. I took response. What does this have to do with her ability to be president? Please tell me. Responsibility, and in the years since, we worked through things as a family and have come out stronger on the other side. Emhoff did not return Fox News Digital's request for comment, but gave the statement to the Harris Friendly News Network hours after the Daily Mail story broke. The affair ended the marriage, according to the Daily Mail, which reported the nanny was also a teacher at Emhoff's children's school. The report said the woman, who Fox News Digital is not naming, did not keep the baby, though it is unclear what happened to the baby or if Emhoff has ever been involved. Are you serious? Do you want to go this route? Donald Trump is a serial rapist. It's over 20 women have accused him of rape, including he's accused of rape of children. He's all over the fucking Epstein files. Like, like if it's like, oh, extramarital affairs. Hmm. Salacious. Yeah. Why hasn't anyone else talked about this? In the child's life. Um, now, and uh, first of all, can I just say, uh, you did not come out stronger on the other end? It's like the idea that, well, you had an affair and it made your family stronger. No, it, you're not married anymore. It tore your family apart. Your family's not stronger now. Um. And there's, in general, affairs do not make a marriage stronger. Ho hopefully a marriage will survive it. It's not going to make it stronger, though. You've actually permanently weakened your marriage. Permanently. Like, who is this for? <laughs> I just, who's sitting there like, oh, I was actually contemplating maybe voting for that ticket. But at the end of the day, I didn't really know about the extramarital affair prior to meeting the person that I'm supposed to be voting for. So... Yeah. What's on the other side there? What do we got? What do we got cooking? What's what's going on with that JD Vance? What are his policies in regards to... Oh, shit. Yeah, he's the dolphin porn guy. Well, at least the president of the United States, you know, Mr. Trump. Oh, Donald. What? I've seen files. Say it ain't so. All right, well, maybe I will look back over here and see what they're offering. In any case, I've read reports elsewhere that the nanny mistress uh, may have had a miscarriage. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, is that the case, or did they... I don't know, but I am going to speculate wildly on the potential loss of someone's child. <laughs> this is gross. This is why This is why people who are not within the weird fucking safe space, they, they see it for what it is. It's just like, ew, what? <laughs> What's the point of this? Did they employ more proactive means of ending the pregnancy? Uh, or was the child born? 
And if so, has he been neglected and banished the same way that Joe Biden has shunned the granddaughter that his son Hunter had out of wedlock? There's no way for us to know for sure. We just don't know. Now, I would normally say that... No, I don't care. Like, the fucking, this reeks of the whole uh, Bill Clinton uh, had an affair, so he needs to be fucking kicked out of the presidency of the United States for such. Uh, no, maybe the war crimes, I would say, probably worse in, in, in his racist policies that led to more incarceration of uh, disproportionately black Americans, certainly. That, that would be stuff that you could look towards him being a complete and absolute piece of shit for. In, not by the woman that he had had an affair with, but uh, by women prior he had been accused of rape. Also, by the way, if we're talking Clinton all over the Epstein files. But of all things, the fact that he had a consensual blowjob in the White House, that, that's the thing that we're going after. In this case, it's like, well, I don't know if you know this, but the vice president's husband, uh, prior to their relationship, had been in an affair, and that affair had ended their relationship. But kind of feels like no one wants to talk about that, or the potential children that I'm now just conceiving of in my fan fiction of the entire affair the marital affairs of the second gentleman are not relevant to voters and i would still say that here there are countless reasons this is again you can't play this card trump <laughs> serial adulterer serial rapist it's just like what if you're going to try and steer this based on the morality of people keeping together the sanctity of marriage you have a ticket in which both individuals are happily married I mean, insofar as we know, I don't really want to dig into their private lives. It doesn't really have a lot to do with their ability to govern. I understand for the optics of it all, this is incredibly important to the birth havers. ...to not vote for Kamala Harris. The fact that her husband got the nanny pregnant 15 years ago doesn't even make the top 50 on the list. But even if this... I have another video game recommendation to recreate, Miss Pac-Man. Uh, that would essentially just be tag, wouldn't it? Unless there was like something you had to collect. Like if you had to collect eggs along the way uh, and then uh, people were chasing you. ...has no electoral significance it still matters, and it matters for one reason above all, that Doug Emhoff, the guy who ruined his first marriage by sleeping with, an, with an, and impregnating the nanny, is now on a crusade against- Wait, you went from speculating that to just stating it as fact? Why, like, <laughs> America, can't you sue people for doing this? Like, it's one thing to be like, I don't know, question mark. Yeah, some have said, many are thinking, but then to be like, so the guy who had an affair impregnated his nanny and then uh, forced her to have a miscarriage, at which point he then reveled in the abortion. Uh, like, wait, what? <laughs> I thought at first you were like, I, I, not, I heard a rumor, but I didn't know if it was true. So-called toxic masculinity. Indeed, a headline in the Washington Post tells us that Emhoff himself is, quote, the antidote to toxic masculinity. But what is toxic masculinity and why does it need an antidote, at least according to Emhoff? Well, here he is in an interview with CNN in 2022 explaining. There is still a bit of a stigma uh, with the notion of men taking a step back and being openly supportive. There absolutely is. But like Matt Walsh is proud of the problem of this. Again, th this should be seen as something that's unbelievably cool. <laughs> like to be like, you know, I love reveling in my partner's success. Every time she accomplishes something or, or uh, pulls off an achievement, I'm like, I'm so fucking proud of her. I don't sit there being like, but this overshadows me. And now my accomplishments in regard have been emasculated. I am weak. I am low T. I am beta. Like, what the fuck? It's like, oh, man, that's awesome. And again, if it was like, hey, by the way, like, do you want to marry Oprah? <laughs> like... What? That, like, that's a whole Dave Chappelle sketch. It's a, this, this is a Chappelle show sketch. A very, very good one, too. About, hell yeah! <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> of a woman who has a bigger role and a bigger job than the man does. Are you trying to intentionally destigmatize that? Definitely. Definitely. You think about it. Are you the first cuck? I do. Um... I do, not at the beginning, because yeah. this was a no-brainer, but now that I'm in the role, and you really see, like, not all men naturally would do this and, and would push back. And then there's this, this, this toxicity, this, this, 
Uh, I don't get what the gotcha is here. What? That he, like, he, he was a shitty husband in the past. I agree. Who's on the other side of that? Who's like, you should really cheat on your wife and ruin your marriage. No, no one says this. <laughs> so, uh, and then he grew from it. He became a better husband in a different relationship. And he is subsequently now taking a, I guess, a step for uh, masculinity of a different kind. One in which, yes, you can be proud of your partner and one in which, yes, they can be more successful than you in a variety of ways that doesn't take away. Like, this is what women have had to live with forever. <laughs> like, ever since we've had societies, women have been on the other end of this. It's like, ah, yes, there was the occasional queen, uh, but that was in like the divine bloodline of the incest families and the monarchies and shit like that. For the rest of it, for a lot of it, it's usually men dominating like uh, the scene militarily, uh, politically, uh, through religion, uh, through through control, through religion, through empires, uh, through fallen empires, like all that shit. So, yeah. It sounds lovely, actually, to take a step back. You're like, yeah, no, she's she's the vice president. That's pretty cool. And soon I will be married. I'm going, I'm going to be upgrading from the second gentleman to the first gentleman. Yes, that's the highest of all gentlemen. There is no higher gentleman. Come on. Uh, what up, Freems? I'm going to go check out Freems' channel. Shit happens, sounds like I took responsibility. Paid for yeah, and, and again, what does this have to do with electing them? Like, this is all you have? It's just like attack after attack so far has been so sad. The ones that like are of any note when they're basically like, okay, you can't just keep doing the racism stuff or the sexism stuff. Yeah, like GOP voters right now who are women are sounding the alarm on J.D. Vance. There's been multiple articles, not in far leftist pinko communist like publication. I'm not talking Jacobin. I'm talking in fucking Fox News where it's like women GOP voters are sounding the alarm on Vance's policies, statements, uh, childless cat ladies, uh, controlling uh, women's menstrual cycles through apps, all that shit. Yeah, it's deeply weird and creepy and fucked. And like, don't do this. Don't you are going to alienate women within your own ranks. And I'm sorry, you still need women voters you still need white women maga like uh, voting blocks to be able to win this election uh, otherwise you're fucked so change course do something else uh okay Let, let's go after the the vice president's husband then yeah he's a low t soy cuck who, who's basically the biggest cuck in america uh, and he's emasculated uh, he shouldn't be proud of his wife uh, he shouldn't be proud of the position that he's in. He shouldn't be honored to be the first second gentleman. Uh, all, all of this, you know, deeply, deeply cucked behavior. M masculine idea of what, what a man is that's out there that is just not correct. Now, he's right, by the way, at least about the first part. Um, not all men would be willing to play first lady or second lady, uh, even worse, to their wives and become a stay-at-home husband. Uh, I... I wouldn't be a stay-at-home husband. Providing for my family is my fundamental purpose on earth, and I would never give that up. Now, fortunately, I have a wife who certainly would never want. <laughs> it's also creepy, you know? Especially hearing, like, maybe Matt Walsh is a little bit newer to the scene than, say, Stephen Crowder. But just knowing Stephen Crowder for so long, being an advocate for so many things, uh, the nuclear family, honor thy wife. Uh, I didn't lose my virginity until I had sex with my wife, and that was like a covenant under God, uh, you know? All, all, like, time and time again, all of the people who advocate for, like, you know, the, the sanctity of the family are the ones who shit all over the family unit. Like, he, Stephen Crowder was uh, an abusive husband, uh, was a complete asshole, uh, demanded unreasonable expectations of his wife, uh, especially while she was pregnant with their twins. Uh, her life seemed like a living hell. Uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff just gets worse and worse and worse as he was, like, sexually abusing uh, his male employees and all this other shit like that. Uh, and And... The posturing, like, again, to make this the, the core of all that you are, that like, oh, I could, I could never, could never cook, could never clean, could never take care of the kids, could never do those things. Why? That just sounds like you're a shit dad. You're just a shit person. The same guy who can't do his own laundry. Like, he's admitted on camera, he doesn't know how to do laundry. That's gross. That is deeply gross. Ew. So if your wife goes on vacation for, for a week, you live in filth? That, that's profoundly gross. You babies, like grow the fuck up. And again, this advice, this lifestyle is not going to help younger conservative men. If they're just walking around being like, my purpose in life is to be the giver and I have to be the protector and I must provide and my wife must be obedient to me as she cooks and cleans my filth. It's like, well, yeah, on paper, that sounds like shit. 
Like, yeah, no wonder that women are going dramatically liberal right now. It's just like, whoop, like when you just look at the numbers. And it's like, yeah, of course. The other side is like, we control the wombs, control the menstruation. And I'm like, no, oh, fuck off. Uh, yeah, I get it. I, just, I, I would not want to be around people who were saying that about me. Like, imagine, uh, dudes, if you had just like a group of women who were like, you are not allowed to ejaculate. We will control your semen. Never must you pleasure yourself. We will control roll you put the cage on him put the cook cage and it's like what the fuck no i i do not want to hang out with these ladies they are profoundly sick and twisted and they just want to control my no no i mean i'm sure some dudes right now are like oh dude that's kind of my kink <laughs> like, uh, shame on you okay this is serious get your mind out of the gutters no that would be terrible it's a terrible thing all right. I hate the U.S. Empire. All right. I hate uh, almost all presidents, <laughs> except the imaginary ones that I make up in my head. So, yeah, but still, like, uh, how in the world would you not as a dude just be like, oh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Jill Biden, for her part, has mostly been given the task of changing her husband's Yeah, you're banging the president. Like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. That, doesn't, that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. I get to go have sex with the vice president. I get to go have sex with the president. <laughs> Oh no, I'm so emasculated. Better go have sex with the president. <laughs> and now we know what First Lady uh, Doug Emhoff will be focused on should oh. Kamala win in November. He'll be sent to the front lines to lead the war against toxic masculinity. Mm. Kamala may be a childless cat lady, but she's not a single childless cat lady, which means she has a husband that she can parade around. By the way, also super gross to keep doing this. She has kids. Just because she didn't birth him from her womb doesn't mean that she doesn't have children. They're stepchildren. It's really gross to always imply that, too. Like, are adopted kids not kids? They are. Parents are parents. Sometimes biological parents are shitty as fuck. They're sexually abusive. They're physically abusive. They're emotionally abusive. They're just shitty ass, terrible parents. And sometimes people can find family elsewhere, whether that be through community, whether that be through adopted parents, whether that be through other family members who are not abusive, gross, and fucking horrifying. And then, yes, do those people become, in a lot of ways, their parents? Yes. It, like, if it's like, hey, by the way, my own dad beat the fuck out of me every day, but then, uh, you know, my uncle uh, adopted me and took care of me. I think of him as a father. Who the fuck is anyone to take that away? Like, that's, it's so, again, profoundly gross to then be like, oh, a child is cat lady, doesn't know how to fucking have biological babies. So if it's used in the first sense, it's, it's obviously degrading and damaging because it tells men that their natural masculine dispositions are somehow disordered. Um, there, there's, there's, you know, nothing wrong with, with, with uh, telling them to be strong or encouraging them to exercise control over their emotions. Obviously. Okay, well, the second one, you're getting into a bit of a, what do you mean by that? But the first one, yeah, of course, no one's on the other side of that. Everyone is advocating for it. There's nothing wrong with being strong. But what is strong? Strong, like physically strong, to be in shape and be healthy and exercise? Sure. Did you mean strong of character? That's important as well. These are traits not just for men, but I would say for all genders. Obviously, these messages can be delivered the wrong way, but the fundamental point is good and important. The problem in our culture isn't that boys are being thrown in a you know box or forced to conform to some strict notion of masculinity again it's the opposite in fact with how men are raised from childhood you know too many boys are given no instruction on how to be men no example to follow no guidance on how to grow and mature in their masculinity as the left likes to remind us all the time we're not living in the 1940s we aren't and that means that the era of the strong and stoic man ended a long time ago the, the domestic abusers or rapists again i i don't understand what what is the benefit of uh like celebrating eras where like tv sitcoms would feature domestic abuse as just like a throwaway gag where it's like oh it's it's funny because because he slaps her when, when she gets kind of like it talks back and that's the joke you know or he references how he's gonna beat the fuck out of her bang zoom right to the moon i'm, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you it's, that's the joke. That maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe that's kind of profoundly fucked up. We're now living in the era of drag queens and feminism and gender fluidity and fatherless homes. Most boys these days have no clue how to be men. No idea what to do with their masculine energy because nobody's ever told them or shown them. And, and, and if anyone does come along and says, well, this is what masculinity is all about. You know, in order to be masculine, you should do this. They're condemned by people like Doug Emhoff. 
Now, if toxic masculinity is being used in the second sense, used to describe actually harmful behavior, well, then it unfairly blames masculinity for bullying or narcissistic tendencies that have no gender. No, God, it's, ugh, one step forward, 20 steps back. It's like, well, okay, so if I can actually accept for a second, theoretically, that some of these things might not be all great. It's okay. There, there could be a trait that is associated with being masculine that is negative. Uh, then uh, you associate all things negative with masculinity, ergo, vis-a-vis. -vis. It's like, no, the, we can try and, and separate the, the good from the bad, redefine and try to improve what our very concept of masculinity is. And and it can also, it can include other forms, right? Like the idea of like the alpha chad, it's fucking monster muscles, fucking huge jawline, chiseled, all that kind of shit. That, that's not every single person. It's an unrealistic standard to impose upon, this is what a man should be and look like. And again, when it comes to like the desires of women, it, that's just not true. Some women do love that. Some men love that as well, right? Like that's certainly for some people, that's that's what they like and want to go for. And for other people, they want K-pop stars, you know? They want Michael Sarahs, they want Nathan Fielders, uh, they want silly guys or funny guys. Uh, for other people, they want big guys. Some people want bears, some people want otters. Like there's, there's so many different kinds of what, like it's just why do you have to suddenly say that, hey, if you happen to be a twink, you're not a man. No. No, you can't be. No, no man could ever be a sub. All right, doms only. This is Roman style. Right, then you're just then you're just taking. I mean, there there could be like bad things that a man does that are actually bad. But then if you come in and say, oh, he's being toxically mad. Sam Cedars, yes, a perfect example, right? The, the, there's also just like, you know, the sexy nerd. There's, there's so many different kinds. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be a one size fits all. Masculine. Well, now you're just like slandering all of masculinity because of the actions of this one guy. And if you don't understand why men might take issue with that approach, all you have to do is imagine how almost- What are you talking about? He was responding to people trying, including you, to demean him because he happens to be the second gentleman. And, and that idea, like, not a question that women are consistently asked when they happen to be the first ladies, but it's like, is this an unusual position for you to be in, to have to take a second, uh, second seat to your husband and his many accomplishments? Because he's, after all, now the vice president or the president of the United States, and what have you done? You know, that kind of thing. But he is being asked that because, again, these are reverse gender roles that don't occur as often, uh, if not ever. Uh, so it's one of those things where, well, how do you feel? What does this say to you? What, what does this do to you and your concept of masculinity? Do you feel emasculated, right? There are certainly dynamics at play that need to be explored. And, and it's healthy to do that. It's, it's healthy to talk about it. It's healthy to be like, yeah, th there's certainly elements of it where the fact that every single person I meet talks to me about this does weigh a little bit on me, does occasionally make me feel like, wait, what? Uh, and so like, that's why I would be like, yeah, so I think it's, it's, it's perfectly healthy to push back in the opposite direction and say, that would be fucking awesome. <laughs> Again, <laughs> yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world to be like. Yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna be married to the president of the United States. Okay, <laughs> cool. Any woman would react if I said that. You know, gossipy materialistic bimbos have toxic femininity. That would be at the very least. This is a thing, Matt. It absolutely is a thing that is explored. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Not the fact that your weird stereotypes of women are what, you know, negative uh, femininity can be, but absolutely, yes, it is the dynamic to see whether or not there are feminine traits that reinforce the same structures of power, such as patriarchy. Are they also negative to men? Is patriarchy negative to men? And the answer is yes, it is. It, 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 like, it's one of those things where... Unnecessarily don't you wish to be unburdened by this shit? Come on. It, it's one of those things where, like... For the men's rights advocates, the ones who are constantly like, oh, uh, the whole thing is flipped. Uh, all of society favors women. Uh, they get all the power in divorce. They get all the power in custody battles. They don't have to die in wars. They, I, I, we've been lied to. We actually live in a completely hyper matriarchal society. They just won't tell you that. You're living in the matrix. The whole thing is upside down. You got to increase the body count, bro. All that kind of shit. Well, then when, don't you want to flip it then? You, of anyone, should be like, oh, okay, well, if the system is, is bad, the current one, however you define it, then don't you want to stop it and crush it because you, you, you're pointing out things in which you think it has negative effects upon men? Yeah, 
Maybe the idea that only men can fight, only men can be soldiers, only men should be in the army. If a woman does it, she must be masculine or gay or butch. One of those things. Well, I mean, how does that play into this whole thing, right? If there's a very high percentage of men that are uh, committing suicide or uh, contemplating committing suicide, what role is playing into that? Why are there very high rates of depression? Have we looked at the fact that if we associate your worth and your sense of like having good mental health with your job under capitalism as things get harder or people have more debt? or people get like debts piled upon them how that can also be potentially emasculating how people can feel and be put in that dynamic where i feel as if i'm not worthy as as a man itself by i'm failing my own call to duty as a gender uh, by you know my struggles under capitalism like everyone else inflammatory way of addressing the problem of materialistic bimbos but worse than that it would suggest that femininity taken to an extreme results in dumb bimbos who spend their husband's money on shoes and purses. So it seems... <laughs> you just did another toxic mask. That's, you, you did it again. Just, you're not describing toxic femininity. <laughs> you just did another toxic mask. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that all women be shopping, all right? I'm not saying that, but I am saying that, like, you know, left to their own devices, the inevitable end is they will take our credit cards and shop. I'm not saying that's what is happening in my marriage to say, well, it's okay to be a woman, but don't be too womanly. Now, of course, nobody ever does talk about toxic femininity, and the reason we don't talk about it is because we recognize how insulting and demeaning that concept is. We also recognize that it's not possible for a woman to be too much of a woman. With, with you know, it's 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 there's not a problem because of an aspect of femininity is not dominating all men. That, that, that's one of the key core components in here. It's not upholding patriarchy, and that's what we look for in the feminine. Uh, you can never be too beautiful, sweetie, you know? I mean, if you think you're beautiful, you just haven't gotten a boob job yet. Yeah, the, 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 you haven't achieved your ultimate form. Secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to patreon.com slash the serves. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Puppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demel, Travis McClinton, Trincell, Words Greenwood. With additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.